Hello and welcome to another season 14 edition of AGT Time. Cody Patterson here along with a special guest this week. Who do we got here? Hey, what's up? It's Cody Mims again. <laughs> hey, welcome back, Cody Mims. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you back. So Jay's on vacation this week, uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying sunny Florida. So Cody Mims was uh, gracious enough to join on this week's podcast. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to talk about this new season. Yeah. So we're in season 14. Uh, we just finished episode four. So we're going to talk about that here uh, in a minute. Uh, real quick, I want to go ahead and get business out of the way and just mention that uh, we're on Twitter at AGT Time. Uh, I'm on there also at Cody L. Patterson. Uh, do you have a Twitter you want to throw out? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at LavaScript if you want. There you go. Uh, and we're, we got an email, agtcast at gmail.com. And we're also on Facebook at agtcast. Uh, there's another guy that has the AGT Time Facebook handle, and I've uh, noticed that he hasn't posted anything in a long time. And I've been trying to do some research to figure out how I can get that. Um, so uh, stay tuned. That that may happen one day. We'll, we'll see. Um, but before we get into the rest, or before we get into season, episode four, uh, Cody, what, uh, what do you think of season 14 so far? So the first two episodes I watched and I was really excited by, um, they were like just the right amount of weird. Um, I mean, you know, three words, light balance kids. Um, the new judges are good. Everything was just like right into place. It was really setting it up to be, I think probably AGT's best season since season 10 episode three seems like where they dumped all the bad acts and just, the boring stuff and the like Seth word type stuff. So I hated that episode. This one I think was really, really solid. There was a lot of stuff in here that I would have put through myself. So I think it's a really good season so far. Good. Yeah. You know, the, the first season as, as we talked or the first episode, as we've, we talked about, it seemed like they were just throwing out yeses left and right. Yeah. Um, I, I personally like a little controversy. Uh, I want the judges to bicker just a little bit. I want some weird. I want some bad. But it seemed like that first episode was just all their good stuff. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I don't mind that. But I guess when you have when you have to fill all these episodes, sometimes it's a little imbalanced. Yeah. I, it's, you know, they they're probably just trying to get you know, any new viewers coming in. Hey, here's all of our good stuff. Now stick around. Uh, and then they threw some of the bad stuff in last episode and a little bit this episode, too. Yeah. So uh, so you like Julianne? You like Gabrielle? Yeah, Julianne is, like, instantly my new favorite judge. She's She just seems like she's, like, a normal person, which Good. none of the other judges have in a <laughs> while. Um, so I, I really like Julianne. Yeah, I, I'm I'm missing Mel B just a little bit. Uh, I'm missing her antics. I'm missing her confusion. Uh, there are some things we didn't like about Mel B, but there's some times I'm missing her. Oh, yeah, I get that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, do you have anything else on the first three episodes? Um, I, I don't think so. There, okay. There's some good weird stuff. That's it. Did you know that there's a uh, Chinese, I mean, it's part of the Got Talent franchise called World's Got Talent that's being televised in China? Uh, I have not seen that. I did watch a little bit of the world's best on CBS. <laughs> yeah, we haven't talked to you since uh, you came on for uh, Professional Regurgitator on Champions. Yeah, I was thinking what? about doing some videos on that, but I never had time to like watch the whole season. But the auditions of that were like every act was treated with the same level of like drama and procedure as like a golden buzzer. The way they like put them through is very confusing, and it takes forever. And also, the judges panel have no chemistry with each other, and it's it's a really bad show. I think I watched a couple of episodes and then I was out. Yeah, but uh, World's Best is kind of, is uh, a lot of our favorite AGT contestants that were already on Champions, and now they're going and doing this All Star show again in China. So. 
uh, your favorite act, Personal Gurgitator, is on there as well. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you ready to get into episode four? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so we kind of had a quick golden buzzer recap, just showed some of the golden buzzers. Um, not a whole lot there, just telling us hey, we had some golden buzzers. But then we went right into uh, our first act, Melissa Arleth, who's a rat trainer. Yeah, I, I wasn't blown away by this. A rat did an obstacle course, and there was some balancing. Yeah, I, I was intrigued. It was a little bit different than what we've seen before. Uh, you know, But it was very similar to like Sarah and Hero. Uh, but I don't know if we've ever seen a rat do an obstacle course on HGT before. Yeah, I don't know. It, it kind of felt too much like uh, we were in the lab or something. Yeah. What did you think of the names of her, her rats, like Hanta and... <laughs> um it's creative yeah she names all of her rats after viruses yeah i think howie was a little uncomfortable i i would i would say so um one of the things i really liked and it wasn't just the performance of the rat but you know she kind of had some circus script uh written along so it was it seemed like it would be it would go over very well in like a like a child's birthday party yeah or like or like a or like a small carnival Uh uh-huh yep um, but I did like that it was different, you know, jumping over gaps, uh, climbing some ladders. Uh, have you ever seen her, seen someone stand on their head and then the rat scurry across her? No, that, that was a pretty good move. Okay. 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 Um, and yeah, I like the, 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 the old school, uh, circus riding. Um, Julianne said she likes weird. She's kind of like you. Maybe that's, maybe that's what you have guys have in common. Maybe so. <laughs> Yeah, you guys like real weird, and uh, of course Simon said rats get a get a bad PR. So you know this was uh, it wasn't their best way to start off a show, but um, it was kind. Of, I felt it was kind of fun. Yeah, it it wasn't the worst way to start off either. No, and of course we got we got four yeses because they're just handing these out like they're candy. <laughs> For sure. Um, right after uh, Melissa, but she was fun. I mean, she was I, it was pretty good. But after Melissa, we get some montage of some singers, and then uh, I've mentioned this before, and I want to get get your take. It doesn't feel like we we have these singers come on and they show montages of some singers getting nose and getting some criticism, but then they bring one out and then they just go nuts. But I personally don't see it and i'm not a record producer but i don't see a difference in any of these singers i i felt that way in previous seasons i feel like this time they're picking worse people to do for the montage so uh i don't know i i, I see it but yeah it's not it's not huge like this singer that we did end up on didn't really grab me either right and the the, the couple that they showed before uh and ansley burns before they uh, showed her, I felt they did a fine job. Um, they weren't terrible, but I just didn't know, you know, what does Simon see in, in Ansley that he doesn't see in these other singers? I don't know. I do like when he explains it, though, because uh, sometimes he can be somewhat insightful. Uh, yeah, a, li- a little bit. You know, he, he gives his, his take on it, but I don't feel he's as critical as he used to be. Yeah, on American Idol, no, for sure. No, I, th- I think he's definitely softened up over the few, over the years. I agree. Uh, but we get Ansley Burns from Easley, South Carolina, and she made sure to let everyone know that 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 Easley is a small town. Did a little research. Uh, population twenty thousand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. Uh, compared, and we we uh, a few weeks ago we talked about South Lake Carroll. Now, are you familiar with South Lake? No. So South Lake, just north of uh, Fort Worth. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Up, up close to it's like uh, it's a suburb of Fort Worth, uh, and I think its population is twenty nine thousand, and they called it a small town as well. So, hmm. do you consider twenty thousand a small town? Honestly, I have no idea. I don't know what my town's population is. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the town I live in is small, but the closest one I think is uh, fifty six thousand. Oh, okay. So. So, uh, but she sang "Think" by Aretha Franklin. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I wasn't grabbed by the singing, but I genuinely did like her. I thought she was funny and likable when she was like, "Well, that just happened." Um, so I, I won't mind seeing more of her, but I I wasn't wowed by the singing. 
Right, and and the, the that just happened was really funny because you know she he Simon stopped her in the middle of her song because of his because of her backing track being too loud. Is yeah. do you feel that do you feel that's more on production that the backing track is too loud? Um, maybe so. I mean, it wasn't a good backing track. I don't know if they brought it or like who provided this track, but um. I think honestly he was right to stop it for this because it it wasn't it wasn't a good showcase of her. I, I wondered that as well. Does the does the performer bring their backing track? Does AGT? Because we know AGT has to approve the songs that they sing. Yeah. And so yeah. we we I didn't know if AGT provided that backing track. Yeah, I don't know. And surely some sound engineer is listening to it, and they can just you know pull down the volume on that a little bit if it's too loud <laughs> yeah i wonder if they mix it up in the in the edit just to amplify it oh you think they in post edit they they actually boosted it a little bit i mean they might have exaggerated how uh <laughs> obnoxious the backing track was <laughs> i don't know so so simon stopped her because he felt the backing track was too loud and then of course uh in edit looks like she got pretty nervous and she probably did get pretty nervous when you get interrupted in the middle of your song oh yeah I'm uh, sure. so so simon offered her some water and uh she basically got a take-home souvenir of his of his duncan water cup yeah it was nice which is like something i liked about this episode like even the boring acts weren't boring to watch it was uh i don't know there's a lot of stuff going on so yeah the that just happened uh little comic we, we got from her which i thought was kind of cute um what did you think of just her singing "Think" as as a cappella? Um, I I mean she did it pretty well. She handled the situation well. Um, yeah, that's got to be tough. It's got to be very tough, especially I think she's what ten or eleven years old. Uh, so, and I I didn't think once she started singing a cappella, you could kind of still you could see some of the flaws in her singing. I thought I thought she was as uh, as Randy would say she was a little pitchy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of the, I, I watched it a second time with the captions on. Uh, the first time I watched it, I didn't have the captions on. I didn't even understand a lot of the lyrics when she was singing it. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so th- th- thank, thank the captions for kind of clearing some of that up. Um, now, I don't know if, you've, uh, if you're aware of this, but one of the new things that we're doing is we're keeping tra- or I'm keeping track of how long uh, the performances are. Okay. So, uh, especially this happened during Champions, where uh, I noticed some acts were getting way more time than the other, than others. So I started keeping track of how long they get on their performance. Yeah. So this one was two fifty-five. Okay. Do, do you feel? Do you feel that's a? Uh, we, traditionally, we would always thought they got ninety seconds. Yeah. So. I don't know what the rules are anymore. <laughs> And and with editing, I mean, it'll be more apparent when we get to a live show. Oh yeah. Uh, But with editing, obviously, it's gonna we're gonna see longer and shorter. But I just feel, you know, why do some acts, why do some acts get longer television time than others? Some get it feels like some get a full performance. Yeah, but the the whole segment was two fifty five. Her well, and I only uh, time it the time that she's actually singing, but for her particular time. I start. I started it when she started singing the first time, through her interruption all the way till she finished the second time. Okay. So um, hers is a little off because of that interruption time, but I felt like that was part of the performance. Yeah. So, um, Julianne said that the moment you sang a cappella, she crushed it. Obviously, four yeses. Um, cute little South Carolina girl gets to go through. Yeah, I I don't mind it. She's a good character. Okay. Good. Uh, so our next act is uh, Sauce, twenty-two. Uh, he kind of does magic. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> now, do you remember Sauce and Victoria from uh, season eleven? I was quick- surprised they were that long ago. Yeah, I, I had to look him up. I don't know how many of these quick change acts we've had. Um, I mean, they weren't the most memorable. Like we got, you know, Light Bounce Kids and the children of those salsa dancers before this is like yeah okay i saw some victoria i guess um yeah it, yeah and season 11 is when we started the podcast right or when when the podcast was started yeah that was our first one 
Yeah, so uh, I went back and looked to see if I had any notes on Sauce and Victoria, but apparently they were on before I joined the podcast. Did you happen to have any notes <laughs> from, from back then? Um, I, I'd, I'd have to look for them, but uh, probably so. But they, they weren't really my favorite acts. No, they were all right. I think we saw another quick change in season 12. Um, and they're, those were fun to watch, I think, once or twice. And uh, this sauce, the magician, said they, that both of them did get to the live shows, and I think they were quickly eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would you think of his magic? I prefer this style of presentation to Shin Lim or Eric Chin, but he is nowhere near as good as them. So I, I don't know how I feel about it overall. Um, I I don't prefer... I, I, I'm not a big fan of the Shin Lim, which I'm surprised he's won two of these championships. I know. People um, are nuts for that, for, yeah. for Shin Lim. And I'm like, okay, well, he kind of just like shows you the thing and then doesn't do anything and stands on stage and doesn't say anything like i i just don't think it's the most engaging presentation style i mean but you know watching something like this uh kind of makes me appreciate like obviously he's very he's very skilled but that's not all that being a magician is uh agreed and uh, you know, also shin lim kind of wipes his hair a couple times and <laughs> he's he, they're though him and eric chin they're very dramatic in their card tricks they're slow they kind of uh, and Ch- Eric Chen was one of those that got like a full, a full, a full set to show all of his tricks. Um, but this one, it's much more action. It's more up speed. But I wasn't thoroughly impressed with this. It felt about half of the performance was him just showing us white cards. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just just blank white cards. Um, and I think he showed us little bitty ones and some big ones. Um, but. It, it seemed like there was too much going on. Uh, I prefer a magician that interacts with the audience and with the judges. Um, he kind of just stood up there dancing some music and then flung cards all about. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Gabriella said that it was like nothing we've seen yet this season, which I think is a much better comment that these judges should make rather than we've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. Well, I guess you wouldn't really know, but <laughs> right. I was trying to think back if we've seen anybody similar to him before. Um, yeah, it, it it is a little new, I think. I don't really remember people who kind of... It's just them on the stage and they're kind of dancing. I don't know. Um, Howie uh, said they're always looking for something unique. Uh, Julianne said they're a full-blown spectacle show. She likes the baby cards. Uh, and I have a fun fact for uh, Julianne here. Um, some news for Julianne this week. Have you heard the news? What's the news? So apparently her and her husband are, uh, and this was just announced uh, Wednesday, so we're recording this on Thursday, announced on Wednesday that her and her husband are trying to have a baby through IVF. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting comments that she talked about baby cards um, and uh, keep it in the family. I think she made a comment, keep it in the family. <laughs> so a lot of baby and family talk coming from uh, Julianne this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Simon said it's not kind of magic. It is magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's close up magic, but far away. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, four yeses for sauce. And we will see him at Judge Cuts. All right. Uh, then we get uh, Marcine. Is that right? It's, um, maybe. I, I yeah. wrote down Marcy. I don't know. Mar- <laughs> uh, 18. He's a guitarist. Um, he makes sounds with his guitar. Yeah. This was uh, fun to listen to. and it was, it was really cool to see his hands go all over his guitar. Uh, I really like this act. Yeah, I really like this act, too. He not only, does, he not only strums his guitar, but he thumps it. Mm-hmm. He, do, he does a lot of thumping. Uh, he's all over the board. Uh, he played Takata and Fugue. Yeah, that was a cool uh, cool choice. And he transitioned into some other songs too, right? Or was that someone else? I think he did transition to another song, but I didn't capture it. But I think a lot of the performance was Takata and Fugue. Okay. I think he went into Disorder by System of a Down. I could be wrong. Okay. I'm not familiar with that song. Yeah. Maybe that's why I didn't notice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I suspect that he has a lot more too. I think 
I think this is an audition that they'll show a clip of in the finale and we'll be like, wow, it sounds so basic. Like uh, like we did with um, Kenichi. And yes, I am predicting that he will get to the finale. <laughs> okay. Put it down, people. We've Put already got it. We got down. That's our second. That's our second finale prediction. What was the first one? Uh, Jay made a prediction last week. I'd have to go back and look at uh, what it was, but Jay made a, a prediction last week that someone's going to get to the finale. Okay. So, <laughs> so are y'all going to do a draft? Uh, we we might do a draft. I'll have to look. Um, we'll see what Gold Derby's doing these days. Uh, we may look at something out there. I haven't decided yet. All right. Cool. But I like I like doing that. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, I look forward to it if you do. Uh, but Marcin is from Poland. He just got accepted to college in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be kind of curious, just eh, just curiosity where he's going. But um, I guess he's going to maybe study guitar or music. Um, this is definitely unique, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. This was this was kicking off some real good, unique acts. What do you kind of predict that he may do down the road? Is he going to have? You know, other performers on the stage? Is he get, does he only do a guitar? I think he can have other performers on the stage for sure. Um, yeah, it, he'll probably stick to the guitar, but, um, you know, it'll, it'll be a lot more impactful, a lot more stuff on the stage. He'll kind of maybe sync up some of his music stuff to pyrotechnics. I don't know. There's a lot he could do, I think. Oh, man, pyrotechnics would be great. I love seeing fire on stage. <laughs> yeah. So um how he said you didn't play the guitar you murdered the guitar for sure yeah uh four more yeses uh so we'll see marcine in the judge cuts um we then get some karaoke montage yeah this was uh this was kind of funny it, it was a good setup to the act that was gonna come i mean i i kind of knew it would be a comedian but uh it was it, it made sense it, it, it was worth putting in the show yeah, I, I kind of like this. I don't remember seeing karaoke before uh, because, I mean, we, we see a lot of singers, but I've never seen anyone actually have a karaoke machine. Yeah, and this is where they showed the whole audience doing it too, I guess, which is like, I guess just what they do when they're waiting on acts or whatever. But it was kind of cool to see some of the more behind the scenes stuff besides just the intro to the judges and all that. Oh, these these people have to be in that audience for several hours. So they've got to have some sort of seventh inning stretch every now and then to loosen up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. later they showed something saying that they're going to have auditions in San Diego, Louisville, and New York. And I was wondering, is that new? Because, like, haven't they been doing them in Hollywood, or have they always done them in these cities? I think that's the pre-auditions. So oh. that's the that's the AGT auditions auditions. Okay. So that's where the producers go, and you know, that's where you audition for the producer and whatnot. I don't think Simon's going to go to Cincinnati and Detroit. And Man, I wish Louisville. they still did that. I loved that. I always loved like seeing, um, like seeing Nick on the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so our montage led up to Andy Rowell, twenty four, who is a karaoke singer. Um, he also is a box office attendant at a theater. Yeah. And I, th I think it's like, not like a movie theater. It's like a, like some comedy place or something. I actually looked this guy up. Um, yeah, his whole, his humor is a lot like, well, it's not that much like his audition. I, I won't be surprised if this is the least weird performance to be honest. Oh, so this guy's got other stuff. He's got, he's got a thing. Yeah. He, I think he's like a professional comedian as well like i guess he doesn't make that really? much money from it or whatever but i mean he's definitely trying to be at least um but yeah his tw his humor is it's weird it's silly it's surreal uh and i'm pretty excited about him i think he could be a welcome shot of weirdness to the season oh that's fantastic i'm glad you you made my day on that because i thought this is all he had oh <laughs> i i don't know what else he had I, this this uh act in particular was based off of a youtube video that he did with like a few million views i think where it's just like him doing this in an actual like karaoke bar um so i, I don't know what else he's gonna do on the stage i hope he's not done because he he seems pretty funny honestly Okay, I can't wait then. I got to look forward to this guy. Uh, but for this performance, uh, he basically stood up there while the entire song for Tequila played. Mm -hmm. And then the, the three times that you say Tequila, that's all he did. He said Tequila. 
It was good delivery, too. It was the right amount of uh, awkward and loud. But th- this was really funny. It was a, a very clever joke audition. Yeah, and I didn't get it at first. And uh, Simon looked really bored at first. But the entire audience was up dancing and cheering. And uh, they yelled tequila when it was time to yell tequila. Uh, the way he'd kind of look around the stage and just stand there and stare out into the audience. Um I, I had trouble getting this at first, but in my second watching, after seeing it the first time, I I I was, and knowing what was coming, it was much funnier for me. Yeah, and this is the perfect uh, show to do this act on. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad Simon enjoyed it. All the judges enjoyed it. Um, Simon hates, hates, hates karaoke. But for some reason, he absolutely loved this guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Howie made some... He was he kind of like critiquing it like it was an actual scene performance or he he did he said song choice is always important <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, I'm I'm excited now for this guy I can't I'm you've told me about more about him I want to see what he does in judge cuts yeah I I hope he sticks around <laughs> yeah I, I do too um, and then we get um, is it Adam's show yeah okay uh dance crew uh who dress like mortal Kombat characters Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and actually wrote down their characters so it's not uh it's not um score was it it's scorpion uh sub-zero yeah um who are the other two that are normally uh uh, no idea yeah okay so anyway there there there's four of them and they all look like mortal Kombat characters but the characters they actually have here is electro the lightning king (laughs) <laughs> yeah his specialty is manipulation uh-huh. uh inferno uh he has limbs of fire and his specialty is isolation so what does he just go and like sit by himself for a while <laughs> isolating his movements maybe i i, I guess i didn't that's like isolation like <laughs> does he just like to sit alone i mean is that his superpower well there's no overprepared girl i guess uh then we had vortex who's a shadow master his specialty is mobility. Mm-hmm. So apparently he gets good cell service. Yeah. Uh, then we have Cyclone, who's the defier of gravity, and his specialty is weightlessness. Now, are Cyclones and Vortexes similar things? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I, that's what I thought. So uh, I wasn't sure why we had a Vortex and a Cyclone. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't quite on the level of uh, the G, G, G girls, what is it? That group uh, we saw. <laughs> I love their intro. This one was pretty good too, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, these guys just came out, put in their stood in their pose, and then did their performance. They had no banter with the judges. They didn't introduce themselves. They just went straight into their act. Yeah, well, the judges should have watched the intro. I guess so. Uh, they said they were inspired by the Jabberwockies. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard, yeah, I like them. Yeah, I like them too. I, they, they're. I didn't go back to see when they were on. They were on a long time ago. Yeah, I think like season eight or something. Yeah, uh, back when they, they still had a YouTube round. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they um, they're a dance crew who kind of does Kenichi style dancing, but as a group. Yeah, so I really liked how they interacted with each other and they kind of act things out. That that's uh, that felt pretty new. Yeah, you had three of them standing in front and one of them standing in back. And the one standing in back was kind of like a puppet master for them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he'd move his hands. They'd do their movements. Uh, some of, a couple of them actually would be able to twist their arms all the way around. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, uh, almost looked like they didn't have, you know, real arms attached. <laughs> so, um, Julianne said it was like Street Fighter meets Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, but those guys had a, they, you know, they, they finished their act. They had a good interaction with the judges. Uh, I think they said they're from Kyrgyzstan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and the Spider by the Jabberwockies. Uh, everybody loved them. I thought they were fantastic. I like this. Yeah, and I thought the Electro Samurai Mortal Kombat theme really did add to it. It was a good uh, aesthetic. But I, I looked these guys up, too, and... Uh, it's, seemed like from their twitter account that agt is like their debut because this is the first thing that they've really like posted about 
Really? So they they've they've not done anything? I mean, I, I don't know, but they, their Twitter account's pretty recent, and they only have two hundred eighty-five okay. followers, which I thought was wow. weird because this episode was watched by ten million people. But yeah, we we need to work on getting that. You know, our big listener base. We need to work on getting that up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, I don't know. I guess it just goes to show you, no one's on Twitter. Ten million people watch the episode, and they have two hundred followers. Wow. Uh, Jabberwocky season two. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Who am I thinking of? I don't know, but uh, last I time thought I was, was on here, I got an act wrong too. So <laughs> I guess I can't remember the old ones very well. Yeah, I knew they were a really long time ago. I didn't remember exactly which season, but um, yeah. And I remember. Um, I don't remember in detail the Jabberwockies, but I remember when they when they came on the scene. They only went to the Vegas round, too. How is everyone so familiar with them? I mean, you know, they're a big thing today. And I think they were, they did a guest appearance on AGT last season or the season before. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They're they're like their own act. Okay. I'm thinking of someone else then. Okay. Yeah. Jabberwockies. Okay. Okay. So, um, so that's at, um, Adam show, I think is what they call. So, you know, I'm. I hope they stick with the Mortal Kombat theme, or maybe I know they're not supposed to be the Mortal Kombat characters, but I hope they kind of stick with some sort of um, game character theme. Yeah, I I think it works. I think it can sustain through the whole uh, show if they stick with it. Yeah, the guy looked like Sub Zero without actually literally looking like Sub Zero, so it didn't look like they were infringing on any trademarks or copyrights or anything yeah yeah uh so yeah four yeses for them and uh we get another act through so it seems like everybody's just going through the judge cuts these days oh yeah i mean i i, I don't mind that because sometimes it feels like they're wasting our time and it doesn't feel like that when they show all the people who are going through like i don't want to have people in the like who's up next in judge cuts oh it's a unnamed dance group yeah, group we never saw in auditions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so our next group uh, is uh, Voices of Service. Uh, and I have just down that there are four, retire, four retired and active Army servicemen and women. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they were all at least sergeant level. I think there were some, like, uh, master sergeant, um, staff sergeant maybe. But they, they were all at least at sergeant level. Um, but they're they're singers. Uh, I think two of them retired, two of them two of them active, um, and they sing uh, to kind of represent the army for uh, former servicemen and women that are maybe experiencing uh, PTSD. Uh, more to kind of just get their to to help help uh, military former military with any type of issue through music. Yeah, it's great what they're doing. It is great what they're doing. Um, they sang Rise by Katy Perry. Yeah, I really like their sound, and I think a lot of it was the great song choice. I really only know this song from AGT because uh, Jaina Brown did it in my favorite musical performance of season 11. Uh, but it was good to hear it again. I think they did it really well. I think they did too. Uh, you know, for a pop song, I thought they did great at the harmonies. Uh, the different um, levels of uh, intonation, I guess, would be the term. Uh, um, so I, I and they had a lot of power to them. So I thought they represented this very well. Yeah, for sure. Now uh, they got four thousand yeses. Simon's really pulling out the four thousand yeses a lot this season. Yeah, I think this is at least the second time he's done it. It was good. It was good the first time. I was like, "Oh, that's new," but now it's like, "All right." <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a lot of yeses though. But I enjoyed this. Uh, it's our kind of annual uh, service uh, military singing group. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then we get um, a little uh, story about how uh, Terry learned to play the flute. Yeah, this was a good segment. Yeah, did you know Terry was a flautist before this? I did not. Yeah. Um, so he said he started playing uh, when he was eight or nine. Uh, his grandmother gave him a flute for Christmas, 
And his mother said, you're going to learn to play that flute. So he said he took flute lessons for about seven years. He can still play, though. Yeah. I don't know if he's actively playing today, but uh, we, we heard a little bit from him later on, and he seemed to do a pretty decent job. I was hoping he would uh, come out with it. I, I didn't think it was that impressive, though. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, you know, uh, it's not top-level flautist playing, flute playing, uh, flautistry. Yeah. If that's a word, yeah. Um, but, you know, I thought he did pretty good for probably not playing in fo- almost 40 years. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. so. <laughs> uh, but we get a montage of flautists. Did you ever expect to have a montage of flautists? I just can't think of anyone who would buy a flute record. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's What was it Simon would say? that uh, Who would want to listen to someone play the flute? Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's great to play and not, it's great to listen to, I think. Yeah. Um, but Terry comes out with his flute. Because uh, one of the, we see an, an act that's just getting ripped to shreds for her flute playing. Uh, and I thought she took it, her facial expressions, uh, were kind of attitudinal, but she seemed to take it in stride. Yeah. Uh, but Terry comes out with a flute, goes down to the judge table, starts playing it and gets a buzz from Simon. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we get, uh, Brandon Coprich. Yeah. These pointless fake outs need to end. Yeah. So I mentioned this to, to Jay last week. Is this a new trend where we're getting the fake out, where they come out doing one thing and then completely flip over to something else? It's definitely been an AGT staple, but it feels like they're they're happening a lot in season 14. I mean, the karaoke one was good. I think that one made sense. This one, I don't know. Like The segment was fun, but it was just filler in an episode that was really on a roll. Uh yeah, I I didn't feel a need for this particular one. Uh, you know the the fake outs. I I don't think we saw as much of it until until Champions with Tokyo Myers. Uh, I felt like he was kind of the one that brought it, you know, across the pond over to us. And now more and more of these acts are doing the, hey, I'm going to play something boring and classical, and then switch over and completely change. And also, uh, Christina Ramos from Spain. So both these Europeans come over and completely change how we now do our AGT performances. Right. Um, but this guy started off playing, you know, a nice, gentle, angelic song on his flute. Um, and then he goes into what? A, like a strip tease? Yeah. What to the song? Was it, is it Pony by Genuine? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, but that's basically what he does. He strips down to his his shorts uh, and just starts doing a strip tease there on the stage with his flute. Does this song have a flute in it or did he just... I think yeah. he added it. Okay. Yeah, I think he just played a flute part. I don't think it has real instruments in its actual version. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, once that happened, Simon was out. Yeah. yeah. Um. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was out as well. Oh, I was definitely out. Yeah, the girls were into it. The crowd seemed to be into it. Um, but, you know, th- there was even a point where Howie was enjoying it for a little bit, and then he was out. <laughs> yeah. You can only take so much, I guess. Yeah, I, I only like this because we finally got uh, some craziness uh, some buzzers, some boos from the crowd. So I was only loving it for that part. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a fun segment. I was surprised they had so much flute material, to be honest. Yeah, it, it's, it'd be interesting to know how many flautists they get. Yeah. I mean, we've seen violins. Um, uh, I don't know if we've seen any, like, brass instruments, but we see a lot of guitars. We see a lot of violins. We see a lot of piano. They must see so many, like, boring acts that I bet when you're there, the fake outs actually land, especially when you when you don't see the packages, I guess. But I don't know. On TV, it's too much. Yeah. Um, do you think we get, like, or do you think they get, like, the bagpipes and accordions? and? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we get all the buzzes, and then uh, Simon gets ready to leave, then Terry comes out on the stage playing his flute. 
Yeah. And he's shirtless. And then Simon's so. just watching from the rafters. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was fun to kind of have this little breakup. Uh, when you're throwing out 40 yeses in a show, it's nice to have something like this. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he went through. I think Simon buzzed, like, I think he pressed Gabrielle and Julian Julianne's buzzer. So yeah. I don't think this guy got put through. I doubt it. Okay. Whew. Breaking the streak here. <laughs> uh, we then quickly get a pet psychic. Oh, yeah. I don't... <laughs> yeah. It was okay. I mean, it was just fun to kind of see a... I-, I was more enjoying this because it was just a breakup from what we've been having. I thought it was weird they got Julian's dogs. Yeah, I thought that was weird, too. It's like, did she just have them handy? Did someone go and get them? I I thought that was weird, too. She sent a message telepathically to the dogs to get them to come (laughs) to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Um, That that was... The psychic was weird. It was weird that... Also weird that the dogs were just ready to come on stage. Yeah. Uh, But some of the interesting things is, you know, uh, they like to ride the car. Uh, she feeds them. She dances for them. You know, the, the dancer that was on Dancing with the Stars dances for her dogs. Yeah. So, uh, so this didn't go through. No. Uh, then we get our dog act of the year. Yeah, I guess it's time for another act like this. Yep. So we get the Dominguez Poodle Review from Dallas. So this was probably my favorite act like this that I've seen, like, maybe ever. It honestly was very cute, but I'm I'm still not on board. I don't need this kind of act. Yeah, this uh, seemed exactly the same as Pompeo Family Dogs from Season 12 and my nemesis, Olate Dogs. Yeah, I liked uh, the one that stood on the guy's hand. I kind of liked what they did with the car. I don't know. There's not a whole lot good I can say about it, though. I thought the kid wearing the pink poodle outfit was much cuter than the dogs. <laughs> I mean, I love the dogs, but we've just seen we've seen this same act. There's only so much you can teach a dog. Yeah. Uh, but their story, they travel in their RV, uh, Saren Hero. So we've heard that story before. Uh, they performed a Don't Stop Me Now, which I thought was, I thought was a fun choice. Uh, but Gabrielle, we've never seen anything like this. Yeah, apparently you didn't watch season 12 because it was the exact same thing. Yeah. So, um, but I think they got put through. I think they'll be fun to watch. I, I, I hope they don't really get far just because it's, we've seen this before. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. But people love their dog acts, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we then get um, a group from France called Berry Wham. Yeah. Uh, they call themselves vocal performers. Yeah, and uh, they they had a pretty good performance. I think their bass is th- their strongest asset, and I, I would give them a yes. Absolutely. Um, I'm not a big fan of Pentatonix. I, I just can't get into them. I know, I know that they're loved. Like Everybody loves Pentatonix. But I thought these guys were better than Pentatonix. They're like a cool Pentatonix. was the That's funniest, a- best review of this ad. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you think Simon's not a Pentatonix fan? <laughs> I guess not. Maybe they turned down his label. Oh, yeah. Um, but these guys were fun. I mean, they uh, they do beatboxing. They did, uh, I had, again, I had the captions on, and it actually said rapping in French. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they, you know, they did laser sounds. Um, so they just didn't do, like, instrument sounds. They actually had, uh, it sounded like a synthesizer, like a, Human synthesizer. Yeah, it, it was very good. I, I hope it, they go far. I do too. Uh, Gabrielle felt like she was at the club, like she was at Coachella. Yeah. Um, Simon said this is not keeping up with the times, is ahead of the times, and then like you said, they're like a cool pentatonics. Mm-hmm. Uh, four yeses. I'm I'm fascinated by these guys. I actually enjoy them a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um. Then we're going to close this out with our golden buzzer, the Detroit Youth Choir. Mm-hmm. What did you think of them? Well, it's our annual choir. Uh, we get one, at least one choir a year. Simon pointed out that we've never had a choir win this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've mentioned before, I love my choirs. Yeah. 
they sang, um, they're from Detroit, the Detroit Youth Choir. Uh, they're directed by a Mr. White. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they sang Can't Hold Us by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Yeah. Um, it was better than what I was expecting. They were, they are kind of rocking. Um, I honestly don't really want to listen to it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Did you like it? Uh, it was okay. They, they did the fake out, started off singing very traditional choir. And then, uh, do you know this song? Cause I'm not familiar with the song. Yeah, I've heard it. Did they sing it like, like the song is, or was it a different rendition? No, it was pretty accurate. I think. Oh, really? So they do the, the rapping type style in the actual song? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought this was something maybe they did. Um, you know, they've got a lot of energy. they got a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoy the choir. I love big choirs. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of see. I mean, if it's... If, I was expecting them to do kind of do their own take on this particular song. So I'm a little disappointed now that you said it's similar to the actual song. Oh, yeah. Um... I, I don't know. I, I do think it's kind of funny to see another choir get a golden buzzer after two in a row last season. Um, I don't think it's the strongest pick, but I, I really love seeing Terry's emotional connection to it. Yeah, and do you think that might have been part of it, is his emotional connection to it, and not the quality of the choir itself? Um, yeah, I, that he, he sold the hell out of it. But Okay. Yeah, it, it was like, I don't know. It, it was very human. I thought it was the most interesting golden buzzer thus far because of that. Um, and I wrote this down before he even did that. I kind of forgot it was his week, but uh, Terry's really coming into his own. I think. I think by this point he feels like a normal part of the AGT crew, so to speak. Uh, agreed. No, he. We didn't see much from him in the first episode, but as the weeks have gone on, we've seen more and more Terry. Uh, I feel he's filling that role very well um tyra at this point i don't think was doing a whole lot it took her much longer to kind of fill into that role yeah and i mean even in champions we saw terry it was just like they would cut to him and it seemed kind of noticeable like a little bit out of place and then he was kind of weird reading the whole they had horrible ways of revealing the votes then but like that that whole part was kind of weird but now he, he really uh blends in well uh, ab- absolutely, and he's um, interacting with the acts, which I think a great ho- I feel a, a good host should do. I don't think Tyra did that enough. Um, he's got a long way to catch up with Nick, though. Yeah, when I, I watched the the Jane Brown clip, because um, they they did that song again, and Nick introduced her, and even just in that little introduction, I was like, wow, Nick was so good at this. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, this was Terry's golden buzzer. Uh, he. It was very emotional about it. He's from Flint, so right there in uh, the uh, Detroit area. Um, so uh, he, 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 could re- he could relate. Uh, he kind of grew up knowing a guy like Mr. White that kind of helped him uh, realize his dreams and get to where he is today. Yeah, I like I liked seeing this a lot. Yep. Uh, do you think it kind of gives it away, though, when he just comes on the stage and interrupts? Um, the judges said, hey, hey, hold on. Do you think everybody kind of knew at that point what was going on? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how else he would do it, but, I mean, either way, it's the end of the episode. It's Golden Buzzer o'clock. Yeah, they really need to look at putting this Golden Buzzer somewhere else in the episode. <laughs> I don't know why they don't. It's, yeah, it's too predictable. It's like, oh, well, this is the Golden Buzzer. I mean, you know it is when going into it. It's, uh, it's, uh, um, nine fifty-five. Uh, well, East Coast or nine fifty East Coast. Oh, must be the golden buzzer. Yeah. So. Um. So that's that's our acts. We went through that pretty quickly. Um. You got anything else that you kind of want to talk about? Um. I'm looking forward to seeing Julianne's golden buzzer. I think that's the only one we have left, right? I believe so. And it seemed like the, um. The, the preview for next week was something different. It didn't feel like it was a normal show. Oh, did they have that on Hulu? I don't know if I saw the preview. Uh, I, I watched it. I'm actually been watching live this season. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, I, I'm getting to stay up a little bit later um, and uh, watching live. And it seemed like the comer- during the commercial break, they previewed something different. Uh, I thought this week would be Julianne's 
Golden Buzzer. Uh, they kind of flipped that on us and put Terry's this week. What do they show for next week? I don't remember exactly. I just remember that it what it didn't feel like a normal episode. It seemed like they were going to do something different. Okay, cool. Uh, and I, I'm trying to remember back to seasons past if they've done a full six weeks of auditions. Well, haven't they tip? A lot of times they throw a like a recap one in there. Yeah, surely they wouldn't do that before the last episode. Yeah, before the last audition episode is the, is. Do we only have five auditions? Uh, well, this was four. Maybe we only. I mean, we do. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, okay. that's, that's a good question. Probably should have done that research before we came on tonight. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> would be happening next week where they wouldn't just show a regular episode. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's see here. They don't have. Oh, we have some. We know who's going to be on Judge Cuts for judges. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who do uh, we have? Uh, it looks like the judge is going to be Jay Leno. Okay. Uh, Brad Paisley. Okay. Uh, Ellie Kemper. Oh, nice. Yep. And, uh, of course, Gabrielle's got to have her husband on, Dwayne Wade. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. So, I think it'd be pretty good. Brad Paisley. Uh, I don't think he's doing the voice anymore. Is that right? Mm, I don't know. I can't remember if he's the country guy in there or not. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't. You're, you're, you may be right. Um, that'll be fun. I like Ellie Kemper, too. She was great on uh, Kimmy Schmidt. Oh, yeah. That uh, interactive episode coming soon. Yes. Yes. So that's our Kimmy Schmidt moment. Um, so kind of some information here. It looks like Adam Dance Crew was on Asia's Got Talent. Oh, yeah. I didn't, forgot to say it. They won that show. Uh no, finalist. They were a finalist. Oh, didn't we have someone on who Oh, uh no, it was Eric, it was before. Yeah, Eric Chen won. Did y'all Eric talk about Chin, this? Yeah. Do what? Did y'all talk about this on here? I I don't remember. Who? Eric Chen. Uh we mid, we talked about him when he was on, but we didn't talk about him being on Asia's Got Talent. Oh yeah, he was, he's the, apparently the second winner to compete on AGT after Sacred Rihanna. Okay. Uh, Mus- Musaudi Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess we haven't seen these others yet. Jinzilla. Yeah, what do you think of Jinzilla? Um, not my favorite. Okay. <laughs> you think he's kind of a, uh, a a rock version of Prince Poppycock? Um, I guess so. I I don't know. I just I I he did have very good stage presence. I'll have to admit, but I I don't know. Is it gonna work a second time? I don't. Know. Who's to okay. say? So it looks like, yeah, Auditions 5 will be on June 25th, so next week, and then they'll have the best of auditions after that. Okay. Well, looking forward to it. Absolutely. Um, So that's all we've got for this episode. Um, Jay should be back next week to talk about season, or sorry, episode 5, back on our normal regular schedule. We'll kind of see how things go throughout the summer if we... You know, as vacations come on, you know, it is summertime. We like to take trips, vacations, but we'll kind of see how things work. But I appreciate you coming on this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was glad I liked the episode, too. <laughs> yeah. If you had me on good. last week, it wouldn't have been as fun. Oh, well, you know, uh, maybe some sometimes one you don't like can be just as fun, fun as one you do like. Yeah. So uh, thanks for coming on. Um, but that's all we've got. So uh, everyone, have a good uh, have a good week.